Hello everybody, welcome to Mr. Stanley's Chess Academy. This is the beginner's course lesson three. And what we're going to do today um, is we are going to start off by um, looking at some more examples of this idea of checkmate because it's such an important idea in the game. We're then going to um, have a have a talk about the um, three stages of a game of chess and how we're going to use that to structure our further studies in chess and then we're going to look at how you start a game of chess so when you've got all the pieces in front of you you're playing your first game we'll talk about what moves you need to do first um, so this idea of checkmate so um, as we talked about last time if you're going to move your um, piece into a position where the next go you can take your opponent's king then you say check and your opponent has to do a move that stops you being able to take the king next move so it might be move a piece in front of it or it might be to move the king out of the way however if there are no pieces that can be moved in front of the king or there are no squares that the king can move to without being taken next go then it is checkmate and you have managed to capture your opponent's king and you have won the game. So I'm going to show you um, a few more examples of what checkmate looks like um, so that you've got kind of an idea of, of what you need to aim for eventually in the game. So here we have a situation um, where all the other pieces have taken each other um, off the board and we have the uh, king um, and uh, the black king here. So it's white's move and they can do a move that will get black in checkmate. Have a little look and see if you can see it before I tell you. You might want to pause the video and see if you can find what the right move is because I'm gonna go and tell you uh, right now. So the move that will get checkmate is to move the queen to h1. Okay, so uh, this move here puts the king into check because I'm going to take you next go. But if the king moves here, then the, the opponent king can take it. If the king moves here, the opponent king can take it. And so this is checkmate. You might have been thinking that this was a good move. And this is quite a good move because it gets the opponent in check but the king can move to h7 without being taken can't move to g7 because this king can take it but can move to h7 so in this situation this is checkmate this move though is just check because the king can move here let's look at uh, another example um, so we um, we have here um, two uh, two rooks here, and uh, it's whites to move. And so if white starts by putting their rook there, black moves here. Now, if white moves their rook here, then it can take the king next go. Check. The king can't move onto this rank here because of this rook here. Because if the king moves, say, to e4, it could be taken by this rook. And it can't do that. It's an illegal move. It's just not allowed. You can't even do it by mistake. What some beginner players do is that they'll be playing like this and, uh, and um, the black player will go, oh, I'm going to go there. And then they'll go, oh, look, I can take you. Oh, I've taken you. I've won the game. I've won the game. But you're not allowed to do that because because you are not allowed. Okay, it's an impossible move. It's an illegal move to move your king into a position where it will be taken. It's just not allowed. So the king now can't go onto this rank and is in check on this rank. So it can only move into these three squares. Now, if white moves this rook here. We've got check, the king can't move onto this rank, so it has to move here. Move this rook down, check, can't move onto this rank, 
can't move on to this rank, so it has to go here. And then, time for the killer blow. The rook comes down here, check, the king can't move on to this row, and so this is checkmate again. Okay, and this is called in the trade the lawnmower mate uh, because these rooks are behaving like uh, lawnmowers mowing down the board. Okay, so that's uh, the lawnmower checkmate. Let me show you uh, another example of checkmate. Um, I hope I hope you are you are getting the picture now. So this one, this example of checkmate is going to be with. Uh, two bishops. Okay, so um, if we look at the situation, it's white's to move, and white can move and get black into checkmate. Um, have a little look. Can you can you see the move that white can do? I just have a sip of my tea whilst you're thinking about that. If you're still looking for it, you might want to pause the video at this point. So the um, move is to move the bishop to c3. So you move the bishop to c3. The king is in check. But the king can't move here because of this bishop here. And can't move here because of the king here. OK, so it is... Um, very possible to get checkmate with a with a king and two bishops. Right? It's quite tricky, but you can do it. So that's another example of checkmate. Let me show you um, one final example of checkmate. And this is getting checkmate with just two pawns. So um, if we look at this position here, it is white to move, and white can get black in checkmate in one move. So have a look carefully. Can you see it? If you can't see it, maybe pause the video again until you can see it, but I'm gonna tell you the answer now. So the, the answer is to move this C pawn forward one space. And so, Pawns take, di take diagonally, so this is check. The king can't move to c8 because of this pawn, can't move to e8 because of this pawn, and can't move to e6 because the king's here. Cannot take either of the pawns because the king here is protecting them. Okay, so, uh, so this is another example of checkmate. So, um, so a whole variety of ways there. So I hope that's, um, that's um, deepened your understanding of what checkmate is um, and how, and also just to emphasize the point, you can never do a move that will place your king into check, okay? You cannot move your own king into check or move a piece that would put your king into check. And I'll just, I'll just show you um, an example of that. So say if you had this position here, um, and you are black and it's your move, you're not allowed to move this bishop because if you move this bishop, then the rook can take the king next go. Okay, so uh, the king would be in check. So you're not allowed to put your king in check, so you're not allowed to move that piece. Okay, just like if the king was here, the king is not allowed to move to this square and this square because they'd be putting themselves in check. Okay, I want to talk now um, about the three stages of the game of chess. So, um, there, at the start of the game of chess, we call this bit of the game of chess the opening. Okay, so in the opening, the idea is, is that you're getting all of your soldiers out onto the battlefield as quickly as possible. So both armies are charging at each other. And that part of the game might last for seven, eight, maybe sometimes 14 or 15 moves. Okay, so you'll have uh, players moving their pieces onto the battleground. 
You then have what we call in the trade the middle games. This is when all of the pieces are out on the board and the board's very busy and there's lots going on. And at this point, you need to start using your thinking skills, your the chess skills that you've developed to try and think quite creatively, to think about how you can outwit your enemy, how you can crush them intellectually. And then in this middle game, you know, pieces get exchanged, uh, you take each other's pieces, and until you've only got a handful of pieces on the board. So you might have the king and maybe three or four other pieces. And when the game reaches this stage, this is what we call the end game. So this is when you're trying to uh, finish off your opponent when they only have a few pieces left. So when we're going to continue studying chess after today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to break each lesson down into those three parts of the game because they each require very different skills, very different ways of thinking, and there's uh, different things you can learn to be good at them. OK, so each lesson will have a little bit about openings and openings is mostly about memorization. It's learning off by heart the, the, the series of moves you're going to do at the start of the game. The middle game is all about problem solving. It's all about um, uh, thinking about little tactics that you can do to outwit your opponent. And in the end game, um, there's, uh, there's certain kind of key ideas that if you learn them, um, they will really help you uh, get victory against an opponent who hasn't learned them. OK, so it's about it's about knowledge and out and making sure you have more knowledge than your opponent about what to do in that end game. So we'll start just uh, just at the end of today's lesson. Now we're going to think about um, the start of the game, the opening of the game. And so you now know how all the pieces move. And you might have challenged somebody to a game of chess and then you're faced with this quite daunting uh, picture in front of you where you have um, all 32 pieces out on the board. Um, you know that you have to try and capture your enemy's king, but how on earth are you going to do that? It seems a long way off. And, and what, do you, what do you do? What, what, where do you start? So um, I just want to give you a few hints now about, about where to start thinking in a game of chess. So the most important part of the board, just as in a battle, the most important part of the battlefield, is the centre. If you can take and hold the centre in a battlefield, you've probably got a good chance of winning the battle. And it's the same in chess. So these four squares here are really important. They're the most important squares at the start of a game of chess. So in your opening move or opening moves, you want to try and get your pieces into this central square or put pieces in a position where they can take pieces in that central square. So the, the best opening there is, and this is why lots and lots of grandmasters do this opening. They might have been playing chess for 50 years and they still do this opening. And this is moving the pawn. And remember, in the first go, you can move it not one, but two places forward. So you're moving the E pawn to E4. So this is a really good move because you're occupying one of those center squares. And if any piece moves into d5, that pawn can take it. So just in that one move, you are taking control of two squares in the middle. And this is why black, if you're playing black pieces, they usually, as their first move, copy you. They do this move because they're moving this piece into the middle and they're attacking this square here. So um, this is how a lot of chess games start. And, and this is what I recommend you start a chess game with as well. So if you're white pieces, kings put the pawn in front of the king to e4. If you're black pieces, the pawn goes to e5. Now, another thing you want to try and do in your first few moves is to try and get your bishops and your knights out onto the battlefield. These are what we call in the trade our minor pieces. So if you remember, these are worth three points, the bishops and the knights. So this is another reason why this move 
e4 is very good because look, it allows you to get your bishop out. So, um, so another move, that your second move, you might think, what should I do now? Well, you can get, you start getting your, your, your minor pieces out. So let's move this bishop, let's say, let's put it here. And then your opponent, they might think, well, I'm going to start getting my minor pieces out. So if you're black, you might want to play the bishop or, or you might want to start getting your knight out. So you can jump over pieces, remember? One, one, two, and across. I'll put that pawn back there, a bit of a glitch. There we go, one, two, across. And now you think, well, what do I do now? Well, you haven't got all of your minor pieces out and all your bishops and your knights are out yet. So you might want to move this knight out. And then your opponent might think, well, uh, what am I going to do? I'm now going to move my bishop out. And then you might think, well, what, what do I want to do now? Well, you still haven't got all of your all of your bishops and knights out. So let's move this knight. Let's move it here. And then your opponent might think, what shall I do? I'll, 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 oh, I haven't finished moving my pieces out. I'm going to move my knight out here. And then you might think, what shall I do? Well, you still haven't moved out all of your bishops and knights, so your bishop here hasn't been moved. Now, you can't move that bishop at the moment because it's been blocked by these two pawns. So, at this stage, you need to move one of your pawns so that you can get your bishop out. And so, uh, for example, you might move your pawn there. You wouldn't really move it here because you, it might get taken by the bishop there and by the pawn here. So, so moving it two spaces might be a bit silly. But just move one place there. And then black might do something like this. Another little glitch. It can't, that pawn. So that might move here. And then finally you'll move out your bishop here. And black might move their bishop there. So this is this is just the end of the opening game, all right? And then we would now at this point go into the middle game where all the pieces are out. We need to think a little bit more, but we'll talk more about that next time. But can you see that even by not thinking too much, all right? I haven't given it much deep thought. I have done a series of moves where all of my, my troops are out onto the battlefield, or most of them are out onto the battlefield. Um, and it gives me lots of a whole, um, array of moves that I can do. So, you know, this knight could move here or it's threatening this bishop, this pawn here. And then this, this bishop can move to lots of places and this bishop can move lots of places. And, uh, you know, your this, this, this knight can move lots of places. So there's lots of options open for me now because I've got all of my troops out to battle. A little tip I've got for you that until you've moved out all of your um, knights and bishops. Don't move a piece twice, only move a piece once. Okay, so if we uh, just go back to England, what do we do? Well, we know that we need to do this as a starting move because it's good. And then what do we do now? We need to move out our bishops and our knights. So let's move out a knight first this time. Let's move this knight out first this time. Oh, let's move out this bishop. I think I'll move it to here now. Oh, now I need to move this bishop out, so I'll move my pawn. Can you see? So I'm not moving any piece more than once. Okay. And even at this stage, I would suggest that you think about um, developing your queen, moving your queen maybe to here, or get your rooks involved in the game. Okay. So that's just to give you some tips. So when you're when you're faced with this situation, you now know what to do. Move this pawn here. Lots of beginners, and I'll tell you what lots of beginners do, don't, you won't make this mistake, I know. They start a game like this, they move this uh, pawn here. Now, this isn't putting any pressure on these middle squares, and it's not helping either of your bishops get out. So, um, no, no championship game, no grandmaster has ever won a game of chess by starting it with this move or with this move. Again, because you're not putting any pressure on the middle and you're not helping get your bishops out. OK, so don't ever do that. If I ever catch any of you doing that, you might have to be banned from chess. So this is your opening move, moving your king forward to e4. 
and then you're moving out your bishops and your knights. And at this stage, as long as you're not putting them in a position where they're going to get taken, so, you know, I wouldn't go and put your, your bishop there because it would be taken by that. But do, don't worry too much about where you place them as long as they're out in the battlefield threatening the opponent. OK, um, that's enough chess for today. Um, I'm going to set you lots of um, kind of puzzles and things to think about to embed this thinking. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week.